Hey fifth graders, welcome to spelling class. We are going to be working on workbook pages 91 and 92, which look like this. Before we get started, we are going to be reviewing our spelling words. So go ahead and make sure that you have the books right, book pages ready and repeat after me when I say our words, okay? Let's go. Export. Exchange. Expression. Impolite. Imports. Imperfection. Inactive. Incapable. Incomplete. Informative. Nonsense. Nonfiction. Thorax. Species. Antenna. Abdomen. Segmented. Exoskeleton. Invertebrate. Bilateral. Unilateral. Contortion. And distort. Fantastic. So we are going to be talking about antonyms and idioms today. So these should be review concepts for you guys. We went over these in reading and English classes. However, I know it's been a while, so it's good. It's always good to review, right? So here we are. Synonyms are words that are similar in meaning. For example, start and begin, pretty lovely, quick and fast. I was scared, I was frightened, similar meaning. I was tired, I was sleepy, similar meaning. Antonyms, on the other hand, are opposite meanings. And these are what we're going to be focusing on today. For example, left and right, loud and soft, fast and slow, etc. So let's go ahead and practice with these first. Page 91 says, an antonym is a word that means the opposite of another word. Write a list word that is an antonym for each word. By the way, for today's spelling book pages, I'm going to be doing the odd numbers with you guys. You're going to do the even numbers, just like math class. And then on Friday's Zoom, we'll go over the answers together, okay? Now, some of these are kind of easy to find the antonyms for. And some of these are harder than others. So you might also want to use the Kids Dictionary, the link that I uh, sent. This website, it also provides antonyms and synonyms. Or you can just go to thesaurus.com, okay? Which tell you, which tells you the antonyms and synonyms as well. But let's go ahead and try to see if we can figure these out just by looking at our definitions. So, the opposite of vertebrate. Well, this sounds familiar, right? It is invertebrate, yeah. So we know that in means not. So the opposite of vertebrate would be not a vertebrae, so the answer is invertebrate. Oops, sorry, make sure that your spelling is right. Like, don't make the mistake I did. Number three, undivided. So un means not also, okay? 
So the antonym opposite of undivided should be something that is divided. So which spelling word means something that is divided into different parts? Aha, segmented, divided, right? Therefore, the antonym of undivided would be segmented. Number five. Keep, to keep something. What is the opposite of keeping something? So instead of keeping my Game Boy, I'm going to give it away, right? So which word here means to give something away or, yeah, exchange basically. Well, go ahead and look at these definitions and see if you found it. You can pause the video here also. Write down if you found it. Ah, I actually said the answer, didn't I? Exchange. To give in return for something else, trade. So instead of keeping it, you're giving it away, you're trading it. Number seven, straight. What is the opposite of straight? So think about like a, a person who is standing up straight. If they're not standing up straight, they're doing the opposite of it. What are they doing? They're bending. So, pause the video, look through the definitions. What did you get? I think it is contortion, right? Opposite of a person who is standing straight, someone whose body is twisted, contorted. So, seven is contortion. All right. Prefixes. X means to out, X means out, from away, in means not, M also means not, non means not. Okay, so using these prefixes, we are going to write pattern words, which are these, to match the definitions. Great. So, number nine, sends things out from one country into another country. Out, we, we need the prefix X. If you're sending something out of the country, what is that called? Act of sending goods to another country, exports. Like sending something out, like exporting the mask out of the country. So, export. 11, brings things into one country from another country. So that's the opposite of number nine. Bringing something in is imports. Yes. All right. Next, we're going to be talking about our idioms. So remember, idioms are, well, it actually gives you a definition here, are fun ways to talk about everyday things. Write the list word that is suggested for each idiom in the sentences. All right, let's go over some of these first. So idioms are just something that you have to memorize. You don't, obviously, you don't have to memorize everything. But they're just fun ways to say something that is not literal, so it's figurative language. So for example, if I say, I'm feeling as cool as a cucumber, that means that I feel very calm and peaceful. And if I say, whoa, hold your horses, stop running in the hallway, it means to stop and think, right? And if you say, this homework is a piece of cake, that means it's something that's very easy to do. If you're not saying that you want to eat the homework, it's just a saying in an English idiom. Some other ones. Don't let the grass grow under your feet. That means to act now, don't delay. If something is half-baked, so not fully cooked, it means that it hasn't been really planned very well. So if somebody says, oh, this Halloween party was half-baked, it means like, oh, it wasn't really planned very well. Someone did not do a good job planning it. If you're getting under somebody's skin, that means you're bothering them. So if you tell like your sibling, stop getting under my skin, it means to stop bothering me. You should try to use some of these. <laughs> it's a good way to practice. A deadpan expression is somebody who doesn't show any expression. Like, no, you can't really tell what they're thinking. To be in the know, kids in the know. Like if you say, I am in the know, that means you know what's going on. You have a lot of information. To drop the ball means to make a mistake. Like, uh, For example, you can't trust John to do the job right. He's always dropping the ball. He never does anything right. 
All right, so these are some fun idioms. Let's see how they relate to our spelling words. So people who let the grass grow under their feet are blank. So if you remember, letting the grass grow under your feet means that you have to act now. So people who actually do let the grass grow under their feet means they're not acting now. They're not doing anything. So they are, in fact, inactive. They're not doing anything. Number 15, if you get under someone's skin, you are being blank. So if you're bothering somebody, if you're bothering the dog, then you are being, what are you being? Are you being nice? Is that something nice to do? No, it is not very kind. It is rude. Impolite, it's impolite. If you're getting under somebody's skin, you are being impolite. Number 17, if you are in the know, so if you know all the information, then you have found out some blank details. You have found out some informative details. If you are in the know, then you have information. Cool. Let's go ahead and do number 92. Page 92, sorry. Read the narrative story about a lettuce diet at the museum. Write list words to complete the story. Okay, we love these, so this is a good way to practice vocabulary. I, all the definitions are in the PowerPoint, right? Um, I, I'll do a few of these with you guys, but I believe that you can do these. It's a good way to add some new English words in your vocab. So, as you can probably see, they made a huge typo here, right? How is this supposed to be spelled? Yep, M-U-S-E-U-M. I don't know why there's a W there, just ignore that. Today my class and I visited a museum. Our teacher scheduled us for the presentation titled Insects, Celebrate the Invertebrate. Since I did not like one single bug, I did not want to celebrate the invertebrate at all. I don't, I don't want to celebrate bugs. <laughs> he doesn't like bugs. Uh, however, I did learn several new things and had an enjoyable time. The museum docent selected three students to participate in a skit about an insect. Sorrel was the head of the insect. Tevya was the middle section, the blank. And I was in the third section, the blank. So what is the back section of a bug? Ta-da, it's the abdomen. It was difficult for the three of us to walk around the room and imitate or copy an insect's blank body. I do not understand how insects can walk using six legs. I'm glad I only have two. After the skit, the docent divided us into teams and we played a game. I was glad that my team had listened well to the blank details she had shared because my team won. So if you want something, if you won the quiz, if you won the game, then you paid attention to a lot of informative details. Yeah, lots of knowledge. Okay, let's go to this paragraph. After playing the game, my class and I were led into the exhibit hall where several insects were displayed in their habitats. So where insects live. The insects were alive, but they were blank. So the word but here tells us it should be the opposite. So the opposite of alive and active is inactive, inactive. So they're probably sleeping, not moving around. Okay. I asked the docent how the museum was able to get so many insects for the exhibit. She informed us or she told us that the museum blank insects from other places such as Malaysia, Philippines, and some South American countries. This is a huge hint, boys and girls, countries. The museum, there should be a verb here, right? The museum blank insects from other countries. So if you get insects, if you get it from other countries, is it an import or is it an export? If you're getting it, so export is sending it out. But if you're receiving it, it is an import. Fabulous. All right, guys, go ahead and try the rest on your own. And we'll go over the answers tomorrow at 3 o'clock at Zoom. And I am super excited to talk to you guys again soon. Have yourself a wonderful Thursday, and I will see you. Bye-bye.